Hello and welcome to what will probably be my last CK2 series before Crusader Kings 3 comes out, which will be in about two months from now. Aren't you excited? I know I'm excited. <laughs> uh, but so, this got me thinking, and my very first Crusader Kings 2 series on YouTube was called Ladies of Ireland, where I started with equality for all genders in Ireland. This was back pre-Holy Fury days when Ireland had less counties. And we conquered from there, we conquered England, we conquered a lot of stuff. And it was quite fun. But it got me thinking, I want to do something a little differently. We're going to do Ladies of Iceland. And we're going to start up here in Vestisland. Though we cannot start in 769 because it's a silly ther theocracy. So we're going to go to the Viking Age. We're going to start here in Ostisland. We're going to change this dude. Um, for one thing, you need to be... And here is our beautiful shield. A lovely three green leaves. We are rose enigmatic. We are 18 years old. We're Irish Catholic. You know, we were, or what part, there were some settler that came when the bishop was there and now we've taken the land. We're a bastard. We were raised. Maybe we were the bastard of the Norse dude. This dude. Maybe his father. Oh, when well, we were 18, he was 41. We could totally be his kid. All right, finish. Play. We will have one different rule. We're not going to be Iron Man. Gender equality will be all right here. Nomads, you know what? Nomads can be stable. Let's start the game. All right. First things first, we need to get married. Matrilineal marriage. We can marry Prince Carloman of West Francia, which is quite lovely. We'll get ourselves a bloodline. So we're marrying him matrilineally. We'll also get ourselves an alliance over here with West Francia, which uh, I will be quite happy with. Take an ambition. We would like to groom an heir. We want more fertility. We're going to go seduction. We want more fertility. Uh, we are going to try and change the tanistry once we've been ruling for 10 years. But for now, we need court. And the problem is, all everyone on our court, well, we've got this person. We've got one person here. Uh, yeah, we might use you. But we're going to go and invite some nobles. We are getting married! Uh, yes, it's everyone's concern. Let's get that 10 gold. Oh, my confessor! Kundils Diegra is such an attractive man. I've applied my ample charms and can tell he's thinking of other things than God. Lustful worship. Let us seduce you, sir. The idea of seducing Kundils, a man of the cloth, is so exciting. Yes, I'm definitely risking a scandal here. It will be worth it. And he is married to our spy mistress. Oh, you are... You know what? Let's confess our love. Um, vidi vidi vidi. And we're pregnant! Oh, cool. We have a uh, eunuch that we can still try and seduce him. We need to rest and avoid any hard task. So bring my seduction skills to bear on Elorinos, and I have him wrapped around my finger. Yes, let's seduce the eunuch. I'm uncertain about my future, and I cannot stop worrying about the life of my unborn child. Perhaps I should make a vow to the Holy Virgin Mary, and pray her to ease my tribulations and help me give birth to a strong and healthy child. I must do this. The statue of the Holy Virgin stands over the chapel's alcove, and... The divine child resting on her arm, I kneel before it and look up in her somber style. Let's be humble and set aside all frivolous things. Smoother skin, shining eyes, fuller curves. The changes brought by this pregnancy have made me more beautiful than I ever was in my, in my entire life. It would be inappropriate to flaunt my looks while I'm with child. Yes, we did promise to be humble. Ooh, okay, hello. You know, let our love grow. We will make a lover of the eunuch. Ours is a holy love. It is a pure and holy love. Oh, and our husband died. We have a daughter, and she has the carling blood. Hello, my dear daughters. This man has a bloodline. Commander of Gwent. He's 77. Let's see if we can get a kid off of him. Hello, good sir. We, we have designs upon your person. I, that I made was not made. The Holy Virgin has blessed me with a healthy, strong girl. I must still keep true to my vow. Yes. And our husband died. Who will marry this dude? He also has a bloodline. He's 68, but that's okay. Third time's the charm. Give me... A kid. And I am a child! First the signs were small, easily dismissed as coincidences, but now they are becoming too frequent to be ignored. I will give birth under auspicious stars. Beautiful. And we have had another daughter! Lily sleeps safely in my arms. She looks so sweet and innocent. The first days after the pregnancy was over, I could not be parted from her, but I'm starting to feel the weight of my responsibilities as chiefess pulling me away from her. 
I will always be with you. And we're pregnant again. Smoother skin, shining eyes, fuller curves. The changes brought on by this pregnancy have made me more beautiful than I ever was in my entire life. Well worth the nausea. We are not promising to be humble this time. Our husband has found out that we are having an affair with the eunuch. Lied to his face. Tulip, I need I need your bloodline. Don't die. Oh, and our husband died. Three kids. Two with the same father. Uh, let's see if we need new husbands. <laughs> yes, marry us, Domino. You, sir, you have another bloodline. You were trying to kill our lover. End your plot. Husband, stop trying to kill our eunuch lover. It's not like we do anything with him. Totally fine. <gasps> it's him amuse myself with seducing a handsome young god. He follows me around like a puppy. A very big, muscular puppy. I give him a tumble and I'm the most loyal bodyguard ever. <gasps> he must be with power. My husband believe it is his. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, maybe this guy's not really a eunuch. How did he get us pregnant? Good news, darling. Oh, we're vomiting. Things we have the bubonic plague. I feel much better if your humors restored their proper balance and the bloodletting and the bloodletting was the best way to go. It did nothing. Now we have a fever. Probably developing consumption. A foot bath against your fever. It was freezing, but we got health. Mm, sudden gurgling and feeling of pressure in your gut is all the warning you have before you were forced to make a dash for the privy. Now we have diarrhea. Labor worsened the already precarious condition I was in. The midwives took worried. I feel so terribly weak. I am bound to my bedroom in a state halfway between nightmares and reality, struggling on the brink of death. I must pray to God. And we got declared on. Yep, we're gonna have to win this war fast. And we are incapable in bed because of our triple pregnancy. Pregnancy is over, but I've yet to leave my chamber, scourged by a steaming fever, which is leaving me shivering and burning under my bedsheets. Oh, great! Although my body's recovering from the pregnancy, the pain I endured has deeply scarred my mind. Every little sound puts me on alert, and it is harder and harder to find the resolve to go outside of my room, even perform the simplest task. We are now infirm. That's not good. Let's go for a wave theology. Pray to the gods. Oh no, now we have food poisoning. As long as you know what you're doing, sir. Good, I feel better. <laughs> Good! We no longer have food poisoning. 100%. We're gonna do this while we have these mercs. We will take the whole of the island. 100% war score. Thank you. Offer peace, enforce demands. Excellent. We own all of the island. Now it's just a matter of money. And of course we got rid of the mercs. No, we can't afford to donate to charity, dude. <gasps> Higher. Yes, 96 troops. I'll take them. Let's hope. Defending. Yes! Ooh, I'm bringing Tulip to the local monastery today, where she meets with many of my brothers and sisters doing penance, who greet her politely. As we leave the monastery, my daughter says, Go with God to all those she met today. I'm very proud of her attitude in the ways of St. Benedict. And we will switch to... Tanistry. My daughter can be shrewd, yes. We shall do penance. Today my seclusion begins. I have selected a simple chamber in the village where I will spend most of my time during the coming months. Within those bare walls I shall do my prayers, read the Bible, and contemplate my life and actions. God shall be my companion. I cannot make sense of this passage of the Bible. The words are archaic and their meaning is deeply hidden by copious layers of symbolism. It would greatly benefit my spiritual development if I discovered the text's essence on my own. Although at this point perhaps it would be better off... better off asking my court chaplain. There's no shame in asking for help. I immediately sought out court chaplain Kundals to request his aid. I seemed to have caught him at a bad time, however, for he agreed with some discernible reluctance. Kundals had no patience with me, and when I failed to keep up, he had left in anger. We failed to make sense of the passage. You bastard. Is this because we seduced you twice? You're a mean tiny-eyed little old ma little man. I know that St. Benedict was a paragon of temperance. However, I struggle to control my appetite. While doing penance, I am supposed to eat very simple food in a small portions, but I'm growing wary. I cannot concentrate when my stomach rumbles like this. Uh, I shall defeat my desires with a fast. <gasps> the first days of the fast were reasonably well, but on the second one, I woke up ravenous. I thought I would die. I hurried to the kitchen, ignoring the servant's stares. Once there, I procured proceeded to shove anything edible I could find in my mouth, not caring who saw me. Now everyone knows about my failure. You've been betrayed by your sinful nature and broken seclusion for a time. This has shamed you in the eyes of others and greatly hampered your project progress. We failed to do penance, and now we're pregnant. <gasps> During this evening's council meeting, Steward Gormungus Gorm 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 told us of a rumor he had encountered. The peasants speak of an artifact hidden not far away from here. The specifics of Gormungus' Gorm information are uncertain, but perhaps this would be worth investigating. Steward Gorm Gormgus arrange a search. Finding to be this artifact. Steward Gormungus has uncovered several clues indicating that Count 
Gormelian of Domania possesses important information regarding the rumored artifact. However, he is unwilling to talk, and Gormgus wants more spies transfer transferring from the regular mystery to target the Count instead. Go for it. Ooh, and our daughter is grown up, and we have groomed an heir. All right, my dear daughter needs a matrilineal marriage. My husband is the brother of my daughter's husband. What a twisted web we leave. We sure, I think this be friendship. My steward, Gormgus, has sought me out with his concerns regarding the search for the relic. Gormgus has asked me to issue a decree allowing his treasure hunters to appropriate the resources and men they need from the local burgers. You shall have your decree. Ooh, I no longer find joy in stuffing myself with fine wines, red meat, and rich sausages. I think I need a diet. I always imagined I would be the first of us to go, but now I am the one mourning the parchment of my dear friend. Never again will I hear Hesso's jolly laugh or receive his wise counsel. It is as if I have lost an essential part of myself. I feel so powerless. Mm, I guess I wouldn't want me to cry. Let's drink in his honor. I've probably already had one drink too many when I am joined at the table by an equally intoxicated man. It takes me a few minutes to realize, but surely it must be Bishop Dub de Creek. Another old friend of Hesso's. We spend quite some time reminiscing about our old comrade. Yes, let's become good friends. <gasps> Gormgus has returned and brought with him a well-preserved hand. He has proof that it once belonged to a saint. Perhaps I might guide my hand when I next find myself in battle. Finding artifacts is what I pay you for, dude. Oh, our daughter's pregnant. Yes, yeah, she can be my marshal. <gasps> we I woke up this morning and realized I have lost my feelings for my lover, Ereanos. I'm sorry. My daughter was born. Oh, I live my life as other women do, navigating its rocks and obstacles, doing my best to achieve success in my endeavors. Still, everything we do takes place in the light of the Lord, and we must take care at least the influence of Lucifer comes into our lives. I should ponder this more deeply. Ooh, where am I? Who are these people? Ooh. Pretty colors. We are now infirm or incapable. And we're dead. Chief Dis Rose has given up the ghost at age 38. She died comatose in bed, eating barely eating anything. Rose was known for her weak constitution. Many at court were fearing that her habits would lead her to an untimely demise for years before her death. Yes, she was she went from gluttonous to malnourished. She had a very difficult pregnancy. She gave birth to six kids. It was a it was a harsh slice for women back then. And, oh, she killed one guy who died in our dungeons. Chieftess Tulip, having mastered many skills, she is sure to be admired by her subjects. Long live Chieftess Tulip. So be it. And that concludes the life of our first Chieftess Rose. Will Chieftess Tulip manage to actually create the dungeon? I don't know. Let's find out in the next episode. And see y'all next time.